and welcome to Sanford Flip Math. This is Precalculus, and we are looking at uh, our third installment in section 2.4, and we are working in the Demana Waits Foley Kennedy Precalculus book, fourth or fifth edition, depending on what uh, what which one you happen to have. And so we're just going to work through three examples today, and uh, so this should be a fairly short video. And we're going to first start with writing a polynomial equation. And we've done an example like this back in section 2.3, but it came up again here in 2.4. So we're going to do that again. Uh, so just a reminder that <coughs> excuse me, these, these points that have y values of 0, well, those are, you guessed it, called, oop, not that one, called the zeros of the function. Okay, so, so x equals negative 2, uh, 1, and 4 are the zeros, and you don't necessarily need to uh, write those down separately, but uh, just know that those values are where the factors of this equation come from. Okay, so and remember the factors for this equation are just going to be uh, the things that these values make 0. So for instance, negative 2 would make x plus 2 equal to 0, and ultimately it just ends up the opposite sign. Okay, so that the next factor is going to be x minus 1, and then f f finally x minus 4. So these are the factors that we would put together to make a polynomial equation. Okay, now the only other question is, is what's up with this 0, 4? Well, that's just another point that's going to be on this curve somewhere, and if we did a little sketch, and uh, you don't necessarily need to do a sketch for this, but I just want you to see where it comes from. And so this would do, look something like this uh, from that information. And so really that 0, 4 is a y-intercept. And when I talked about this in 2, 3, I just warned against, you can't just put a little plus 4 down here and call it good. That doesn't work. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so I'm going to make that disappear. Nope, I didn't make it disappear, did I? I did the wrong one. Sorry. Doop, doop. There we go. All right. <coughs> So instead, what we do is there could be a number out here multiplying out in front, and we need to solve for that value. All right, so we're going to take that 0, 4, that extra point, and we're just going to substitute it in. Now remember, 0 is an x value, and the 4 is a y value. And so in place of y, we're going to put in 4. I don't know what a is, and that's the whole reason for us doing this. So 0 plus 2, 0 minus 1. 0 minus 4, and we're going to solve this for the a. Okay, so 4 equals a times, well, this is 2 times negative 1 times negative 4, so that's 8. So dividing both sides by 8, 4 divided by 8 is not 2, but it is 1 half. Okay, and so we're just going to go back and put that into the equation where the a was. So this is y equals one half, and then the rest of that stuff. So x plus 2, x minus 1, and x minus 4. Now, this is in factored form. Now, the problems like this in the book, most of the uh, answers in the back of the book are going to be all multiplied out in what's standard form. So I'm going to do that because I, I need you to see that, uh, and you need to know how to do that. It's likely that on a test or a quiz, I'm going to ask for both factored form and standard form. Okay. Okay, so it doesn't really matter what order we multiply this in. Usually, I'll kind of just start on the end. And again, what we're doing is we're putting this in uh, standard form. So I'm just going to have the y equals 1 half x, uh, times x plus 2 just come along for the ride for a second. And to multiply this out, we basically have to distribute or FOIL. So x times x. Outer is going to be negative 4x. And inner is going to be negative 1x. And then last times last. And I really need to combine like terms. Tap, 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 tap. All right, so that's one step. Now I need to multiply all of this times all of this. So I'm going to end up with six different little pieces of this thing. And again, that one half is just going to come along for the ride for a minute. Okay, I, I don't want to make a bunch of fractions right now. I'll make fractions at the end, then I only have to deal with them once. Okay, So when I do this, I'm going to multiply x times all three of those. So x cubed minus 5x squared plus 4x. 
And then we're going to multiply 2 times all three of those. <coughs> okay, so now when I do this, and you don't have to do it this way, uh, I just think it helps me organize things. I stack things based on their like terms. So for instance, 2 times x squared is 2x squared. I'm going to put that under the 5x squared. 2 times negative 5x is going to be negative 10x. And then 2 times 4 is 8. Okay, so I'm going to combine like terms now. So I'm just going to add these things together. Okay, so let me, I don't want you to use that. All right, so y equals 1 half. So x cubed, and again, all I'm doing is combining like terms. I'm, not, I'm just following the signs that are already here. Okay, one more step and I'm done. So y equals 1 half x cubed minus 3 halves, or if you want 1.5 instead, that's fine, minus 3x plus 4. Okay, so all I did was distribute the 1 half. Okay, so that's it for that example. One down, and uh, we'll do a little highlighting just for, for fun. Woohoo! All right, next up, we're going to find all of the zeros for this lovely equation. And because it is fourth degree, I actually should expect four zeros, four distinct zeros. Well, I can't say distinct, four zeros total. Okay? All right, so we're going to do a little typing in the calculator. Okay, so we're going to do a little typing here. And where'd my calculator go? It's not, oh, I saw it flash. There it is. Okay, I have no idea what's going on. All right, so we got it working. Uh, this is, so I have already typed in the equation into the calculator. And we're going to take a look at what the graph looks like. And there it is. And here's a bigger version of it. OK, so what we are looking for is, quote, easy to identify zeros so that we can do some synthetic division. OK, so remember what the goal is. We're, we're trying to find the zeros. Come on. Okay, so the goal is to find the zeros. And the problem is I can't factor this like I would with a quadratic. You know, if I, if I just had x squared, maybe I could factor. Uh, maybe I could do quadratic formula. But because I can't do that with a fourth degree, I'm going to start by trying to figure out some factors by peeking at the graph. And if I can look at the graph and identify zeros, then I can look at the graph and identify factors also. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to peek at the graph and try and identify factors from the zeros. Okay, so I'm looking for zeros. Well, I see this spot where it crosses the x-axis here, but that looks like four, three point something, and I don't know what that is. Okay, um, I don't know negative point something. I don't know what that is, and to tell you the truth, this looks kind of jacked up too. So I, I'm going to go to the table and hope for a little better information on the table. Okay. Well, on the table, I can see that negative two actually is a zero. Okay, so that's good. All right, so I guess we'll just start with that and see what happens. Okay, so going back to there. And just a quick reminder of what that graph looked like. It looked something like this. And that negative 2 happened here. Okay. All right, so if negative 2 is a 0, then x plus 2 is a factor. And if I'm trying to factor this, or in other words, unmultiply, I'm going to actually divide. And if I'm dividing by x plus 2, then I need to put the opposite of that, negative 2, in the box. OK, so negative 2 was the 0. The opposite of that gives me the factor. And the opposite of that gives me what goes in the box for synthetic division. So in essence, the 0 just goes in the box. Here we go. Remember, synthetic division, you bring down the first number. And then after that, everything is multiply, add. OK, so here we go. So negative 2, negative 1. So I'm multiplying, and I'm adding. And I'm multiplying, and I'm adding. And I'm multiplying, and I'm adding. And I'm very excited to see that the remainder is 0. If the remainder wasn't 0, then x plus 2 wasn't a factor, and x equals negative 2 wasn't a 0. 
Okay. Now, the next issue is, is that I just took a fourth degree and made it into a third degree. I don't have a cubic formula like a quadratic formula. So I'm still kind of in the same boat I started with. Well, if you recall, this number looked like it was 3 point I don't know, and this number looked like it was negative point I still don't know. But I want to draw your attention, pardon the pun, I want to draw your attention to that spot right there, and notice how it comes in and touches the x-axis, but doesn't actually cross there. I think negative 2 has a multiplicity bigger than 1. I think negative 2 has a multiplicity that's even. So in other words, I think negative 2 is a 0 twice. I think this is really x plus 2 times x plus 2. So I'm going to divide again using negative 2. I'm not going to start over from the beginning because that'll just give me what I started with. That'd be silly. So instead, I'm going to just pick up where I left off. Okay. So bring down the 1, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, and what I notice is that I get a remainder of 0 again. So x plus 2 was indeed a factor twice. I divided by x plus 2 once. I got 0 for a remainder. I divided by x plus 2 again. I got 0 for a remainder. Okay, now just a reminder. Just because you're doing division doesn't mean the, di the remainder is always going to be 0. However, if something is a factor, the remainder needs to be 0. So this, this worked. So this is now a, a quadratic. This is x squared minus 3x minus 2. And I've just factored out the x plus 2 and, yep, another x plus 2. Okay, so this came from here. I want all of this to equal 0 because that's what I'm trying to find is the zeros. Okay, and so I have two of those zeros. It's x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 2. Well, the other two zeros come from this. Now, I could play around with factoring some more, but this doesn't actually factor. x squared minus 3x minus 2, if I tried to factor that, uh, it'd have to be x and x. The signs would have to be different, so like a plus and a minus. And factors of 2 are 1 and 2, and that's never going to add up to negative 3. That's not going to work. So the other method to solve this quadratic might be the quadratic formula. Ugh. So 3 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 3 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. Okay, remember that division bar has to go all the way across the whole thing. So this is really 9 plus 8. So you need to be saying to yourself, why is that plus? And so this is 3 plus or minus the square root of 17 over 2. And that doesn't simplify anymore. Not unless we want to round, and I don't particularly want to round. Okay, so a quick little reminder. We were solving a fourth degree equation. I should expect to see four zeros. Well, x equals negative 2 is one of those. And x equals negative 2 is another one. And then 3 plus the square root of 17 over 2 and 3 minus the square root of, so that's really all four solutions. There they are. Woohoo! I'm excited. I am done. Okay, so we got one more example to look at, and it's a two-parter, but it's not a big deal. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Too far. Okay, so here's the question. We want to find the remainder without dividing. Now, shockingly enough, there's a little rule that this refers to, and that is called the remainder theorem. And we uh, talked about this in, uh, I, think, I think it was the 2-4-B, the last video. Okay? And the remainder theorem basically says that if I'm dividing by x minus c, or x plus c, or x whatever, then if I want to find just the remainder, if all I care about is the remainder only, I can take whatever I would have put in the box for synthetic division and just stick it in the equation. So if I was going to do this division, which I'm not going to do, I would put actually negative 1 in the box. So what I'm going to do is take that negative 1 
and I'm just going to put it in for x, for all of these x's. Okay, so this is going to be negative 1 to the 21st minus 3 times negative 1 to the 10th plus 2 times negative 1 minus 5. And so negative 1 to the 21st power is negative 1. Negative 1 to the 10th is positive 1, so this will be minus 3 times 1, minus 2, minus 5. And so this is negative 11. So that's what the remainder would be if I would do this with division. I'm just not going to do it with division. Now, I suddenly feel compelled to show you what division would look like. So let's just take one, a, a little aside here. If I was going to do division with this, for real, remember that you have to account for every factor or every exponent. So I have to start with x to the 21st, then x to the 20th, and x to the 19th, and x to the 18th, and x to the 17th, and 16th, 15th, 14th, 13th, 12th, 11th, 10th, well, that's negative 3. 9th, 8th, okay, I, I, I've run out of room. Okay, so you get the point. We don't want to do all that. Sometimes it's just ugly, and if all we really care about is the remainder, then we don't need to do all that. Okay? Then one last thing. Is what I just would have divided by a factor, and the only issue here is, is the remainder equal to 0? Nope. The remainder is not 0. All right, that's all we're doing with Sanford Flip Math 2.4C for pre-calculus. Thanks for watching.